I'm Kendall House, and welcome back to Anth 105, Evolution and Human Behavior. In this part of the course, we're going to be focusing on kinship and family, and why uh, families are so important to nearly all of us. In this presentation, we'll look at some of the background to that, uh, focusing on Charles Darwin's reflections on the relationship between altruism and family. I hope you enjoy it. Like all great scientists, Charles Darwin was a thinker. While he was writing his Origin of Species, he came across a puzzle piece that didn't seem to fit into his theory of natural selection, and he spent a lot of time thinking it through. He understood that it was important to have evidence to support his theory, but also looked for evidence that might disprove it, and then study that as well. Now, Darwin's theory of evolution depended on the diversity of life being explained by many small changes or modifications in a species over time. And for these changes being passed down through the generations through reproduction. He wrote, if it could be demonstrated that any complex organ existed, which could not possibly have been formed by numerous successive slight modifications, my theory would absolutely break down. One day he was observing some ants, and he saw something that could potentially poke a big hole in his theory. Now, ant colonies tend to be divided into castes of ants, meaning that they have a hierarchy, and each caste has a specific job. There was a queen ant and her ant boyfriends, and these two did all the reproducing. And then there were the worker ants. The worker, or slave ants, did all the work and had none of the fun because they were completely sterile. These guys would not be furthering evolution by having offspring. So how could small evolutionary changes lead to a huge cast of eunuchs? This was a problem or a puzzle for Darwin. His theory of evolution could not just apply to some species and not to others. As he watched these worker ants slave away all day, he realized that they were behaving in an altruistic or self-sacrificing way. Let's define altruism as any behavior that increases the reproductive success of another organism at some cost to the altruist. These ants were working their little ant heinies off all day so that only the queen and her leisurely lovers could reproduce. This seemed contrary to evolutionary theory. So this was Darwin's special puzzle. Can altruistic behavior be explained by natural selection? He puzzled over this for a long time, but he realized that all of these ants are related to one another. And he reasoned, this difficulty disappears when it is remembered that selection may be applied to the family as well as to the individual. The worker ants do the work and the queen with a select few males do all the reproducing, but through their cooperation, all their genes are still being passed on because they are all genetically related. This idea later called inclusive fitness was synthesized by a science named William Hamilton, and we will talk about his ideas a bit later. So let's discuss for a minute why it was such a big deal to Darwin that someone might make an observation that would falsify his theory. Before the scientific method was formalized, the scientists debated the best way to verify their theories with piles of evidence. But a great philosopher of science named Karl Popper came along with a better idea. Actually, the idea was kind of already floating around, but he formalized it through his excellent debate skills. Basically, this idea proposed that instead of just gathering endless evidence to verify a well-supported hypothesis, get a good basis of evidence and then let other scientists test it and try to falsify it. An example that's connected to pa Karl Popper goes something like this. One day, Dr. Smith sees a beautiful white swan. 
He goes to Yellowstone and sees many white swans, and so he decides that all swans are white. This is his hypothesis, and it is testable. Finding a white swan is evidence, but we could observe a million white swans, and that still does not mean that there are no swans of other colors. So a better way is to make the proposal or hypothesis that all swans are white and then allow other scientists to falsify it. When I went to the zoo in Columbus, Ohio, I observed some black swans, so I will take credit for falsifying that hypothesis. A final point about Karl Popper before reviewing this video. In 1976, Karl Popper shocked the scientific community by stating that Darwin's theory of natural selection is not a testable theory, but a metaphysical research program, a possible framework for testable scientific theories. Well, apparently after some education by the biology community, he changed his mind completely and publicly apologized. In 1978, he stated that the fact that natural selection is difficult to test has led some people to claim it is a tautology. And I too belong among the culprits. I recant my comments. So let's review. Darwin's puzzle referred to the sterile worker ants. Altruism can still be adaptive with family cooperation. Karl Popper was the father of falsification. All swans are white hypothesis is falsifiable. And Popper recanted his comments about Darwin. Mm -hmm.